Hey everyone, welcome to our time here together for Bible study. As you might be able to tell already, we are not in our usual spot, and that's on purpose. We thought it might be nice to change things up a bit. We are, uh, and I'll let you guess for a second, in Pastor Eggold's office. If you haven't seen it before, well, you should. This is it. Here it is. Really nice setting, I think, for us to study. And one of the things I think that's neat for us to do is maybe uh, take a look at his wall of fame over here and let him... My wall of shame. <laughs> explain one piece See, that we he have, has up we there. Have, well, we have all kinds of things that uh, speak to the new church here that yeah, we're that's about right. to, to start. <laughs> and some signs of the season. We've there got we go. a, a nativity scene here yeah. and here. And we even have a Christmas story uh, <laughs> nightmare there. And a little leg lamp that we like. Yes. And uh, I like your angel too. That's a pretty good one. Yeah, we have the angel. Yeah. And we also have. Oh, this is the best. The beard ornaments. And it's a Twelve little too early in the season to put them on, but. I like it. Um, you can see we're getting ready. And as we, uh, as we move into the new church here, we start the season of. Advent. Advent. Yeah. And that's where we're at today. Yeah. And so as we think about just this transition that we're making, um, you know, Happy New Year, if you will. But uh, also when we think of Advent, you know, the, the word means sort of coming is what it means as yeah. we think about it uh, in the original language, uh, the Latin that it comes from. And when you think of that term coming, we're thinking about Christ's coming. And we think about his return someday soon, his second coming. And as we just mentioned and alluded to, we have all of these Christmas sort of ornaments and images that you saw up on Pastor's wall here. Uh, that leads us to his first coming a lot of times is what we get moving towards in Advent. And that's what a lot of people focus on as we think towards Christmas. So a couple of things to keep in mind as we think about this new season. One of the other aspects that we talk about with Advent is the term repentance and uh, why, why do we talk about repentance during this time of season? Yeah, well, when you, when you think about Advent, and like Pastor said, we, we often go right to the, the birth of Jesus at Bethlehem. Um, but ultimately, Advent has for us uh, a, a meaning mm -hmm. that points us forward, not back, and that is to the second coming of Jesus. We've spent a lot of time in recent weeks talking about end times. But that's really what Advent is about. We look ahead to God keeping his mm -hmm. promise to return. And and so this is a season of preparation. In fact, one of the things that we say about Advent and you'll you'll see this on some of the things you receive from the church in the coming days, but Advent is a penitential Mm -hmm. season and there are two penitential seasons in the church year and when we think of penitence or repentance we easily think of Lent but Advent falls into that category too so repentance preparation yeah. uh, mindfulness that's all included in this yeah. first season of the church year and you're going to hear that a lot in the language of our readings building up towards Christmas and as we move into what we call Series B, you're going to hear some language from a variety of books, but one of the books that we will focus on throughout the whole year, from now until next November, uh, is going to be the book of Mark, the Gospel of Mark. And that's going to be one that we use to sort of travel along with this whole life of Christ again, as we recapture that from his birth all the way to his resurrection. And so we're going to use a lot of the key stories from the Gospel of Mark. So just a couple of things to hang on to as you think about this new season of Advent. And so we have a, a new reading schedule. Right. And I'm looking at, at this one. I printed this off from the LCMS website, lcms.org. You can find this under the heading lectionary. And lectionary is a fancy church word for reading schedule. Um, I think we're going to include this on yeah. our app. Is that the plan? That's the plan. So we're going to have a link under this video for you to be able to pull it up right there. Uh, but you can also go and find it yourself on the LCMS website. And that's where the link will take you anyway. But yeah, it'll be right there for you. 
And it's a great way to not only uh, understand where we are in the church here, but it's also a great way to prepare for worship. Mm -hmm. And this is what we use every week for Bible study. Yeah. So you can yeah. get your own copy. Awesome. Well, what is our first reading then? We have a, a reading from Isaiah. Yep, Isaiah 64. Excellent. 1 through 9, and I'll, I'll read that. Sure, sure. Let's do that, and then uh, we'll talk about it some. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil to make your name known to your adversaries, and that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome things that we did not look for, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From of old, no one has heard or perceived by the ear. No one has seen a God besides you who acts for those who wait for him. You meet him who joyfully works righteousness, those who remember you in your ways. Behold, you were angry, and we sinned. In our sins we have been a long time, and shall we be saved? We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us, and have made us melt in the hand of our iniquities. But now, O Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay, and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Be not so terribly angry, O Lord, and remember not iniquity forever. Behold, please look. We are all your people. What a reading to start our new church year season with. And perhaps one of the things I, I stands out to me, and there's a lot in this reading, is just thinking about, you know, what we do for a typical new year. You know, mm -hmm. in January, you get all those new resolutions. You get all these ideas of what I'm going to do better than last year. Yep. And as we start this new church year, you know, there's the temptation that what we need to do is, okay, these are the things that I did poorly last year when it came to faith and religion and, and, and sinning and all of that. And now I need to make an effort to change that. And while that's a good idea, I think, you know, this is where it helps to talk about repentance. Yeah. You know, repentance is, again, an understanding that we come before God not with something to offer, but to come before him understanding that mm -hmm. uh, we are in need of a Savior. You, you get this right. penitential plea at the end of what Isaiah writes here in 64, and we get this sense of, where our works really measure up. And I think that's a powerful thing for us to start with as we enter into this new church year season. This is not simply a chance for us to create a new resolution for us to work harder, do better, and be uh, more, uh, I don't know, good, more faithful people than we can be. And so I think that this is an important aspect that in a penitential season, we come to God not with a bargain, but mm -hmm. we come to God on our knees asking for mercy. Yeah, and the language at the beginning of this really speaks to that penitent posture. Yeah. There, the language is uh, fear of God language. Right, right. that's uh, true. The mountains will quake at your presence, that you would rend the heavens and come down. Um, you have an allusion to uh, even the giving of the law in right. verse 3. Right. When you did awesome things that we did not look for, you came down. Mm -hmm. The mountains mm -hmm. quaked at your presence. If you remember in Exodus 20, when Jesus, I'm sorry, when God yeah. gives the law, yeah. although Jesus is certainly part of that, <laughs> when God gives the law, the, the mountain before Israel quakes and spews smoke, smoke and, and lightning and, and the yeah. people hit the deck. 
<laughs> they say, Moses, you go. We don't want to go. We don't even want to look at that mountain. And that's, yep. that is the penitent mm -hmm. uh, posture of, of sinful humanity. Yep. So you, you're exactly right. You see this call to repentance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, also uh, confessional language that yep. you pointed out. Yep. And I think, too, as you, you bring up moving back to the past history of Israel, and, and that's a great reference there you see from, uh, what is it, verse 3, you, you start to, as we have the full counsel of Scripture, look towards what is to come. So, you know, with Jesus, you see in many a moments where the, the heavens are, you know, rent open, if you will, at yeah. his baptism, or you think of transfiguration Good. where you get this yeah. quaking uh, from the Father's voice, or most especially as we get to the cross. You know, you get this terrifying experience Very for people good. as the earth quakes. And then as we think about what is to come in Christ's second coming, you know, Isaiah's language, while it does reference the people back to Exodus, I think it helps us also look, you know, forward to what is going to come, too, that That's we good. are in that moment, too, of, okay, you know, the Lord is almighty powerful and when he returns we're going to witness that in a very uh, real way it's very good what else stands out to you pastor Eagle, as you read through well this? we we've quoted this often yeah yeah when you're a preacher um you have certain verses that stick in your head that's true and yeah. uh isaiah 64 verse 6 yeah. is one of those that i know i've throughout the year i've hit mm -hmm. because it really uh, turns the thinking of the world on its head. I mean, we we always, as sinful people, want to hold up the things that we do good and pretend that that gives us some standing before sure. God. Yeah. And, and yeah. this is, again, one of those those phrases, all of our righteous acts are like filthy rags, mm. a polluted garment is the ESV. But even the, the best things that we can do, uh, when not done in faith, are worthless before before God. And so in every way, um, admitting the the evil that we mm -hmm. do and think and say, um, but even, even the good things, even mm -hmm. the righteous mm -hmm. acts, we lay bare before God and, and we cry out to him for help. And I think that's the other aspect of this. You see the Mm -hmm. The language of fear of God at the beginning, but you, but you also see uh, this plea, as you put it, for mercy at the end. Be not so terribly angry, and remember not iniquity forever. Yeah. Forgive us, Lord, for we have sinned. Yeah. One of the things that stood out to me, too, yeah, that verse 6, you're right, it is one that gets used often. And you shared with us a couple of weeks ago, at, now at this point, um, a devotion uh, from 1517.org that, oh, yeah. that mentions this very sort of verse in a, a very yeah. nice um, paraphrase language. And, and the point was this, if this is how our righteous deeds, our good deeds, stink before our Lord, imagine what our unrighteous deeds yeah. you know, yeah. seem like before our Lord. Yeah. And, and that really puts you again in that penitential, humbling, confessing yeah. moment to, to realize that, wow, I have nothing... To give, and that's the point. Yeah. You know, that's where we need to be so that we can receive right. and not, you know, deny that fact. Yeah. So, in the the reading is really crystal clear, and it does kick off the Advent season in a way that uh, points us ahead in our need to the coming of our Savior. What's challenging for us as believers in the world is that man. Uh, Everything in the world is is Christmas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we we don't necessarily get the sense of humility. Mm -mm. Uh, mm -hmm. You watch five minutes of TV during December, and yeah. uh, it's about all you can take because it's so over the top with sure. Christmas. But Advent, don't miss Advent. Don't mm -hmm. don't don't blow by this season yeah. because Christmas doesn't mean what it's supposed to mean when there's no yep. season of penitence. Very true. And I think, you know, as you talk about that a little bit as well, uh, that line in verse 4, you know, uh, no eye has seen a God besides you, and then this line that comes after, who acts for those who wait for him, mm -hmm. uh, really is a, a line that stands out in light of the context that we always 
yeah. think about during Advent, you know, you have a lot of Christmas commercialism that comes along and uh, can distract you from waiting for him. But then also there, there's a hope and a promise that, you know, he does act for those that are uh, clinging and holding on to him and, and, you know, waiting for his return. And I think yeah. that's an important theme for us this Advent season. That's, that's what we're waiting for, not for the gifts under the tree. While those are fun, those are great. Uh, we wait for the one who comes in the manger, the one who's going to come and, again, uh, take care of the sins of the world, the one who is going to come again and take us home to himself. And so yeah. that sense of waiting is important. So I have to wait until Christmas morning to put on my beard ornaments <laughs> because they're not very penitential. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and then one last thought, I think, on this one that stands out to me, and then we should move on. Um, I Verse 8 always jumps out to me about, again, this image of we are the clay, you are the pot. Yep. Um, I, I'll never forget there was a devotion that was shared that uses this image as it's spoken here in the Old Testament, mm -hmm. but also as Paul recaptures it in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. It talks about, you know, being formed and molded by your Creator is not always a pleasant thing. <laughs> it, you know, and yeah. it, it kind of, it takes on this nature of the clay and the clay starts crying out, ow, that hurts. And, you know, yeah. you, you start to sit there and say, you know, this time of penitence, this time of waiting is not always the most pleasant of no, times for us. That's a great, us. great image. And yeah. um, to remember that this is our place, that we are being molded, mm -hmm. knows that we have someone who cares for us, but it also, you know, sometimes we're being bent against our will sometimes, and that yeah. takes some... Uh, real firm hands to make that happen. And so I think that's a great image for us in this season, but for all yep. of life. That's very good. That's great. I didn't, I, I blew past that. That's, no. that's an excellent application. Yeah, I, it's just one text. that always stands out to me. So. Good, good. Well, why don't we jump to our next reading? And do you want to explain what's going on with the lectionary here real quick? Just the fact that Sure, the, yeah. So there's a there are a couple of options, actually. Yeah. Um, and sometimes when you... When you look at the lectionary, you'll notice that um, on a given Sunday in the church here, there are a couple of ways you can go, mm -hmm. and it, uh, we certainly as preachers have uh, a reason why we choose the reading that we choose, but the alternate reading, if you look at the beginning of Mark 11, yeah. it's Mark 11, 1 to 10, which is really kind of fascinating. It's the Palm mm -hmm. Sunday triumphal entry narrative in Mark's gospel. And uh, so what is the point of, of Palm Sunday? Certainly that the king comes. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. But yeah. the king comes to die. Yeah. And that's the beginning of Passion Week. Yeah. So, you know, there there is a powerful message for Advent, even in the reading that we didn't. Right, exactly. Choose. Yeah, but today we're going to be in Mark 13. Anything else you wanted to say about the lectionary? Yeah, no, we... I I think a lot of times while we do have reasons for choosing which one we do, I think too you need to understand, like Pastor said, both of them are very applicable and helpful readings. So if you have time to read both of them, do it. Uh, you're going to get a lot out of either of them uh, as we continue to think about this Advent season. That's right. That's right. So it's Mark 11, 1 to 10. That's the alternate reading. Yep. The one that we're going to look at today is Mark 13, 24 to 37. Mark 13. And uh, are you ready for me to read this? Go for it, yeah. Okay. Uh, you'll hear language here that kind of takes you back to the readings mm -hmm. that we've been looking at over these last Very few much. weeks. But in those days, after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts out its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Mm -hmm. Truly, I say to you, 
this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But concerning that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, keep awake, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight, or when the rooster crows or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. Well, I just think we got a reading that tells us that we can't sleep anymore. Mm -hmm. Stay know, awake. Man, my goodness, caffeine and coffee all the way around. <laughs> but uh, That's probably a good one for us to, to talk about. We've heard this language come from a variety of other readings, and the language of sleeping, the language of being awake, uh, sometimes takes on other meanings than just the literal sense of going to bed at night and waking up in the morning. And so maybe we should unpack that just a little bit first, sure. not to you know, get out of order here, but I think it's just one that stands out to a lot of people. When the Lord says at the end to stay awake, um, you know, he's not calling for us to pull all-nighters every moment of our life so that we don't get the rest that our bodies need. Right. But he's, he's really talking about we need to be alert. Yep. To be prepared, as we've heard. To be so, prepared. I mean, yeah. I think that's a great word for this season that you highlighted early on. Uh, preparation for his coming. Because yeah. we don't know the time, but we do know that it's going to happen. Right. And so I think when we think about these terms, awake or asleep, oftentimes in Scripture you need to look at the context to understand what's being said around them so that you know what's being referenced here. Right. And so you have this, yeah. there's this kind of mini little, mini parable yeah, yeah. that Jesus puts forth about the master who who goes on a journey and puts the servants in charge yeah. and charges the doorkeeper, commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. So yeah. the, the, the point is, um, you don't know when the master's coming right. back. Yeah. And the command is be alert, stay mm -hmm. awake, watch, all those yep. words. Yep. And depending on your translation, you may have one or more of those words yep. used in this reading. But the, uh, the encouragement from Scripture here is every day, mm -hmm. every day, we need to live our lives every moment, every hour, knowing that the Master's coming back, mm -hmm. and it could be, it mm -hmm. could be today. Yeah. So it's really a comment on the vigilance yeah. uh, in faith mm -hmm. that directs and guides our our days. Yeah. I like some of the language you mentioned uh, already, but especially as we hear in verse 33, be on guard. Be on guard. Uh, I think that's an interesting language. You know, we're protecting the gift that's been given to us by clinging to God's word, staying connected there, and I think that that's what guards. Uh, you hear the language in my mind that comes up is, you know, the Ephesians passage in chapter 6 where you have the armor of God oh, yeah. That, yeah. that really references the word of God as the armor that we put on. And so in these times, as you mentioned, every moment of our life, uh, right. we are on guard in the word of God. And so I think that's an important aspect to keep in mind. Very good. So. Yeah. And again, a great way to begin the, mm -hmm. the church here. We... Yeah. we you know, the church here is designed to take us through the life of Jesus. Yeah. And so, um, obviously, one of the first seasons is the Christmas season when the Incarnation is celebrated, the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem. But we begin, it's funny, we begin and end yeah. the church yeah. here. If you remember the last few mm -hmm. weeks, we've been talking about the second coming. Yep. So every, every season is lived under this um, 
this promise that mm -hmm. Jesus made. I will come back and take you to be with me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you, you will see the Son of Man come in the same way you saw him go up. Mm -hmm. So everything that we do as God's people is done with this sense of expectation, anticipation. Right. Be right. on guard, stay awake, yep. keep watch. And as you use those, those words of anticipation, expectation, you always connect these words with hope. Definitely. And as I think about it, you know, one of the ways that we have this anticipation, expectation, this hope is in our Advent wreath. You know, mm, you think about the candles, yeah. you know, uh, each one has a different connection. And we often draw those out in our service. Sometimes you do it at home as a family. And one of those candles is a candle of hope. Uh, and, and as you think about it, you know, these are the things that help remind us what we're preparing for. Because yeah. uh, right in the center is the Christ candle, you know, for what we're waiting uh, to receive, you know, especially as when he returns. So even our traditions that we use at church are yeah. all designed to prepare us, to, to point us forward and help us see how we can live this out in our own life. That's great. And, and if you're a parent with young kids, use this time. It's just such a great time. Not only um, will your children be excited about Christmas and yeah. what that means for them, but uh, use use this time to talk about the most important things, the things that matter most, mm -hmm. and that is the promise of Jesus and the waiting that we do each day as believers. Uh, so take that encouragement to heart. Absolutely. Anything else you want to talk about here? The one last thing that I, I think that is a fun connection for us is during this time of year, um, the tree that we think about is a Christmas tree. Yeah. But here, Jesus right away points us to the lesson of a fig tree. And I, I think this is part of the reason I, I chose this passage, is just to start using this as a, a springboard. Uh, and as we think about the lesson from the fig tree is, is when you see it budding, when you see its leaves, you know what's coming. You know that summer is near. And likewise, um, Jesus has prepared his people with... Here, here is what are signs of these times to come yeah. so that we're not unprepared. And, and so one of the things that I really think will be helpful for us is we think about, well, what, what's the, the tree then that we really look at is the tree of the cross. Yeah. And, and I sit here and, and think that, you know, that's where we know that we are prepared. Right. And, and as these signs continue to intensify in, in our time and in the times to come, Yeah. We cling to that, and so there's a, a lesson there from the trees that I think are, you know, fitting for us as we begin this Advent season in the midst of a huge Christmas yeah. time. And as you study the entire reading, which begins in 24, yeah. I think it, it's important to recognize that that these words of Jesus, which which actually begin back in verse five, yeah, they go back. There is this multi-layered uh, teaching. That Jesus does, mm -hmm. although I'm sure they didn't, they didn't get it. Uh, but this multi-layered teaching includes the final coming of Jesus, yep. the, the the day of judgment. Mm -hmm. It also includes the cross, yep. as Pastor Schaefer mentioned. It also includes the destruction of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't say, "Now I'm going to tell you about the cross." Now I'm going to tell you yeah. about. It just is woven into this yep. discourse about end times. So it's it's a fairly complex. Uh, teaching, mm -hmm. but where we begin today's pericope or lectionary reading is in 24, where he starts to talk about the the final mm -hmm. day, mm -hmm. yeah, the end times. Um, but boy, I mean, the idea of tribulation. If 2020 is not an example <laughs> of tribulation, yeah. uh, these are signs. Yep. Yep. These are signs. You know, all of these these difficult things we deal with, whether it's a global pandemic or the loss uh, of a loved one, something mm -hmm. that's very personal. Mm -hmm. These are all things that should make us cling to the promise, mm -hmm. should drive us to repentance. And again, that is the, that's the purpose of Advent. Yeah. And I think to hammer that point home a little bit more is if you look at verse 31, mm -hmm. this underlines exactly what you're saying. And this is what Jesus says. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. And so as we continue to go through these transient times and see the, the decay and chaos and change around yeah. us, 
What does not change is God's Word and the yeah. God that is revealed in that Word. And so that's where we continue to hold on to. When we mention those promises, that's what we're, we're talking about. We're encouraging you to do exactly what Jesus pulls out here in verse 31. Yeah. A lot of good things, oh, and we, we probably just scratched the surface, but hopefully this helps you as we prepare for uh, not only Pastor Schaefer's sermon this week, but, mm -hmm. but also for uh, this season, which is so important in the life of the believer. Yeah. Well, blessings on the rest of your day, and as you prepare during this Advent season, take care. See you soon. <laughs>